Hello, beautiful people. Welcome. Today we're going to be doing the fourth edition of Ask the Jeff. There was supposed to be an Ask the Jeff number four that looked at the questions from Ask the Jeff number three, but it was recorded a really long time ago. And because of editing delays, it's basically a lot of outdated uh, information and questions. So I decided to just scrap it all together and do a new one. If you have any questions that you want to be answered in Ask the Jeff number five, you can leave them uh, as replies to the pinned comment below. If you want to be sure that you don't miss the answer to your question, because I do answer all of the questions, make sure to tune in on Twitch when I record them. And um, yeah, we'll also leave a link to the VOD down below. I answered the questions in order from when they were posed. Notice that I mentioned that five weapons help generate energy for the entire team. Could I explain that a bit? I feel like it only benefits the character you switch into to catch the particles. Uh, it benefits the character that catches the particle more than the other characters, but it still benefits every character. So this is the energy generated based on uh, the type of particle. Here we have same element and caught by the character, same element not caught by the character, not the same element caught by the character, not the same element not caught by the character, and clear particle or white particle caught by the character, and clear particle not caught by the character. Depending on the type of particle and who catches it, every character will always gain energy from every sort of particle that you catch. But the amount that you gain will vary depending on the type. A uh, clear particle, which is what Favonius generates, will either generate two energy or 1.2 energy, depending on whether or not you're catching them. If your character catches them, you'll get two energy, obviously multiplied by your ER. So if you have 200 ER, it's gonna be four energy. If you're, if you're not catching them, you're gonna get 1.2 energy or if you have 200 ER, 2.4. Now you generate three clear particles with the Favonius weapons, which is why it says it generates six energy, which is two times three. But your all-field particles, uh, your all-field character will still get 1.2 times three, which is 3.6 energy. And then if they have a little bit of ER, let's say 150 ER, they're still getting 5.4 energy just from that, um, just from that foul throw. Even if they're not catching it, it's still relevant. How would I rate Hakushin Ring versus DDDS in regards to characters like Ilan that don't scale on attack percent as well as with Dendro coming out with intense reactions. It basically just really depends on your teams and whether or not your rotations actually allow for your TDDS to get the good, a good proc or if they don't. I kind of like Hakushin though, especially because Hakushin's ER subset is actually really useful on most characters where you can you consider it, right? You consider it on Sucrose, you consider it on Kokomi, and both of those characters actually really like ER. Do I think they're gonna add a Dendro damage bonus main stat on Goblet, making it even harder to drop other element type Goblets? They will. They're 100% gonna add a Dendro damage Goblet. If they don't, I will be very surprised. Hopefully, instead of reducing the odds of the other damage percent Goblets, they just decrease the odds of the attack Goblet, defense Goblet, or the HP Goblet, instead of those damage goblets but i mean we don't fucking know man which teams can i actually use gene in where she isn't just a filler unit the only thing that gene provides that other units don't is the sunfire interaction with benna everything else that gene does other units can do and generally other units can do better uh, for those who don't know the sunfire interaction is basically when you're in benna and gene's burst at the same time you're playing Pyro and Animo to yourself, and it's gonna trigger Swirl on your character, which is gonna spread the Pyro onto nearby enemies and deal Swirl damage. You can use that as a source of damage by building Gene full elemental mastery and having the enemies be affected by other elements so that this Swirl reaction will apply Pyro and trigger a chain reaction on your opponents while they're affected by a different element, right? Because if you Swirl your Pyro onto an enemy's Electro, you'll trigger Overload. Onto an enemy's Hydro, you'll trigger Vaporize. Onto an enemy who's affected by Electro Charge, you'll trigger both. How good is Aqua on Yilan and other bow users? It's not that good on Yilan. It's, it's okay. Like, I think that the biggest problem with Aqua is that it is not a signature weapon. The increase you get from the other bow options to Aqua on Yilan, unless you're running like an incredibly low ER team, is it like you're not gaining much damage from aqua and a lot of situations even in low er elan situations the buffs you get from elegy will give more to your team than the damage you gain from aqua and if you're planning on pulling for aqua just for elan i would probably say that's a bad idea unless you're like going for c6 elan or some shit right it's a lot more like jade cutter than like homa where it's not really the best weapon on anyone but it is a solid weapon that will bring value to your account, basically no matter what teams you play. Which characters are worth bringing up to level 90? Every character eventually, if you use them, but the, the general priority is characters that have some form of level scaling, which is to say those that trigger transformative reactions, so Swirl, 
overload, whatever, right? And where that where they build a lot of elemental mastery and it's a significant portion of their damage. Characters like Venti, Kazuma, basically all the animal units. Other than that, characters that scale with defense or HP uh, will generally gain more value from base levels than uh, characters that scale with attack because the, the attack gain that you get from level 80 to level 90 is like, I don't know, 2 3%? It's not that much. Whereas if you look at the defense scaling character, which is like 7.5% ish, it's like almost three times more. Basically, the effect of base attack on your damage on attack scaling characters is a lot smaller than the effect of base defense on defense scaling characters. Characters that scale with defense and HP definitely generally care about base, base levels a lot more than characters that scale with attack. And then finally, it's just gonna be your characters that deal a lot of damage. But my point is simply, generally defense scalers care about levels more than attack scalers. But if your attack scaler is doing all of your fucking team's DPS, it can still be worth leveling them even if they don't gain any specific value out of levels. Just because they're the ones that deal all of their team's damage, leveling them is more useful than leveling a unit that wouldn't. Uh, would Noblesse or Emblem be better on Double Hydro, Hu Tao, Vape, which seems to an Emblem out damage the Noblesse team buff uh, when it doesn't help as much with Hu Tao and is useless on Yelan? And how does this change with the fourth slot? Would Chainlink make Noblesse more worth it? So let's start with this question. Would Chainlink make Noblesse more worth it? worth it yes 100 when it comes to whether or not it is actually worth it the, the reality is people underestimate attack buffs on hu tao are they massive fuck no but they're still there and they still help her damage hu tao is an attack scaling character that gets a massive attack buff from her e and her attack buff scales with her hp but she's still an attack scaler and sure she has low base attack but most of your base attack generally comes from your weapon, not your character base attack. But then on top of that, don't forget that Noblesse applies to your Singto, even if it's on Singto. Going for Noblesse on Singto is basically like going to Noblesse to Gladiators. So the question is, how much better is Four Emblem than two Noblesse to Gladiators? And it is generally a bit better, but it's not like a huge, insurmountable difference. And when you consider that for that damage loss, you're gaining a pretty nice amount of damage on your Hu Tao, then yeah, generally it's just worth it. And then when it comes to adding a Shang Ling in, it makes it even more worth it. Do I think Double Hydro Hu Tao is now better than Double Geo Hu Tao? Yes, fuck Double Geo Hu Tao. It's, it's always been a comfort team. Right now, if you want to play a comfort team, you can just play Zhong Li and have do go Double Hydro. The, the biggest problem with, uh, with Zhong Li before is you didn't have a good fourth option. Albedo is your best one, and Albedo's fine, but Albedo's gonna kind of fuck your reactions over. Fischl's also fine, but Fischl's also gonna fuck your reactions over, although not as much as Albedo. You're gonna, you're gonna lose a few vapes because of Fischl. You're not going to start applying a Pyro Aura the same way that you would with Albedo, but you are going to lose some of your vapes. Whereas with Yelan, that doesn't happen. How do dynamic buffs work exactly? Like, for example, Shangling's Pyronado snaps out all buffs Shangling has, but if she gets like an LG buff during the duration of her ultimate, it would still receive the attack and the M buff, or it would be wasted. It would be wasted. So, there are buffs that are always dynamic, even when things snapshot. It is possible to buff Shangling's Pyronado after it has started. But those buffs are relatively few and far between. If I go Bennett, Shangling, and Raiden, if I start with Shangling Burst, I'm doing what? 1500 on a crit. And if I do this, it's still 1500 on a crit, right? Bennett's Burst isn't increasing anything. Attack buffs won't increase anything if you cast them after you snapshot. But there are buffs that can. So. Right, we still have our 15, 1500. And now, it'd be nice if we got a crit, please. Thank you. There we go, 1700. Because Raiden's E buff does not actually show up in your stat screen, so you can't snapshot it. As a general rule, if your buff shows up somewhere in here, you can snapshot it. If it doesn't, you can't. There are exceptions to that, namely Serpent Spine, but. The, the two, like, significant buffs that you can't snapshot... I guess the three significant buffs that you can't snapshot... Raiden's buff on her E, Yelan's buff on her Ascension 4, and element-specific crit rate buffs like Goro and Sarah. That being said, though, there is another exception to this, which is that, basically, you snapshot your stats for your actual talent damage, but not for transformative damage. For example, if you buff your EM after casting your Pyronado, your overloads will do more damage, but not your Vaporizes. Uh, is Kazuha still the best option to pull for upgrading national team from the basic Shangling, Sinto, Bennett, Sucrose, and overall account instead of Yelano Child? He never was. 
Kazuha is not an upgrade on, on Sucrose National. Like, there are situations where Kazuha National is better than Sucrose National, but, like, it's very similar. When you get a good setup, they're, they're both about as good. It's easier to get good setups with, with Sucrose than it is with Kazuha, because with Kazuha, you're kind of relying on your Singto Orbitals not fucking you over, whereas with Sucrose, you just go up a swirl. If you actually want to do a proper setup, what you have to do is you have to, like, in single target, There we go. I should not have used this burst, though. I finally got this set up, but like, you're kind of relying on make sure your Singto orbitals don't fuck it up. But you can't use the lab instead of Singto because like, you just don't have enough Hydro if you do. Whereas when you use Sucrose, because you don't need to apply Pyro to the enemy because you can Globus Swirl, the setups become so much easier. And you can do the same setup in single target and in AoE. Don't die. But basically, the setups are like a little bit harder to learn uh, with Sucrose because you have to learn Globus Swirl. If you drop Globa and then use Sucrose's E right as the exclamation point appears, it's gonna swirl Pyro from Globa onto enemies and you can get a Pyro BB without the enemies being affected with Pyro. Um, fuck Kazuha National. I think Kazuha National is a fucking, like the biggest bait. I would rather play Sucrose National over Kazuha National in any content that doesn't require like a lot of grouping because the setups are so much more consistent. Kazuha's not even a good option to pull for upgrading your national team. That being said, Kazuha's probably a really good option to upgrade your other team. Or, Sucrose would be good in your other team, so having Kazuha for your national liberates your Sucrose. What weapon is actually better for Sucrose and Sucrose Taser? TDDS to buff Beto, Sack Frogs for her personal damage, or Hakushin Ring to buff all of the team? It kinda depends, but generally, Sack Frogs is just kinda broken. The, the, the main thing about Sack Frog is, first, Sapphire can help front load stuff a little better because you can triple E instead of double E, which can help you with waves. But also, and this is, in my opinion, the most important part of Sackfrog, Sackfrog gives you one more E, and Sucrose's E is a grouping ability. You inherently get better grouping. And I cannot stress enough how broken grouping is in this game. When you look at Sims and you look at Calx, TDDS and Hagushin both have like team variations where they can be slightly better, but fuck that. As someone who has played with Sackfrog and without Sackfrog in Taser, holy fuck, just use Sackfrog. And at higher levels of investment, is it worth to level Sucrose Talents? Yes, but it's also a pretty minor upgrade, so it's never really necessary. Uh, if you could only keep eight units and had to never use the rest, which eight would I keep? That's a good question, actually. I think these four are always staying. Probably Fischl, probably Kazuha, probably Venti, probably Elan. Yeah, like, Venti's not always nice to play, but, like, the difference between having him and not having him is, like, when you're in Cotton Venti of Wakanda, you're just like, man, fuck, fuck this shit. I, I'm not having fun, what is this? <laughs> Care to explain Elan? Need a Hydro? Fuck the other Hydros. <laughs> Like, I don't need a Hydro, but like, realistically, I kind of want to play the National Variation and the Taser Variation. And then the question is like, which Hydro do I take? Could take Ayato. Ayato would be fine. But I kind of like being able to do like, uh, this and this, right? I basically have four teams I can swap between. And all of these teams are really fun to play, right? Like, the, the, the double Animal Taser can be TF Kazuha. It's nice. It's fun. Enjoyable. It's not because these are the eight best units in the game. It's just like... These are units that are part of teams that I enjoy playing. Are there situations where building Fischl with Elegy plus Melilith contributes more to a team than building her for personal damage? Basically, yes, always. Uh, building TOM is basically always better than building full damage on your Fischl because Fischl's never like 50% of your team's damage, right? Realistically, if, you, if you're playing a good team, Fischl won't be that significant of your team's damage. You're better off having her on a buff set than a damage set because she's buffing herself as well, right? Like, the, she gets that 20% attack as like from the second Oz cast onwards. Oh, the only thing you're losing out on is the 15% damage from like Thundering Fury, which isn't that massive and you're gaining 20% of attack on the rest of your team for it. It's generally worth it. 
And then Elegy, it depends on what your other options are, but generally it's still worth it, because Elegy is just a lot of stats. For Klee, I've seen some claims that say Monopyro is her best team due to her not being even able to vaporize that much that she applies too much Pyro. Even with her C16 Toe, does Yelan and Sing Toe with Klee kind of solve that? It kind of does, yeah. What's the difference between a double Hydro Comp and C16 Toe alone and Mono Pyro? Um, so the thing is, when you play only one Hydro, you don't get a lot of vapes and Klee's damage doesn't end up being that high, like her personal damage, compared to a lot of other carries. If you're playing double Hydro, then you have you only have one last slot, so you're either going for an animal unit, which is generally what you kind of want to do, or you're going for Bennett. But if you're going for Bennett, you don't have an animal unit. And if you're going for an animal unit, your Klee is going to have like three attack. Because Klee doesn't have any like personal like attack steroids, then she ends up not benefiting from a team like this as much as a unit like Hu Tao. Hu Tao has a pretty fucking massive attack steroid on her E, which means you don't lose as much from not running Bennett as you do on Klee. Now when it comes to Mono Pyro, you're basically relying on your other three units to carry your Klee. Now the thing is, in double Hydro, you're also kind of just relying on your two Hydro units to carry your Klee. Klee's still gonna do a decent amount of damage, but I wouldn't say that it's enough damage to justify her field time requirements. Don't take this as me saying you can't play Klee, you obviously can. And even if she's not that she's not very good compared to a lot of other carries that doesn't matter what's a good analogy for this it's like if, if in my neighborhood there's like a really good vietnamese restaurant and an okay indian restaurant sometimes i'll be like the vietnamese restaurant is like their stuff is better generally but i'm in the mood for indian food today if you want to play clee because you like playing clee just because it's not as good as another thing doesn't mean you can't and doesn't mean you're not gonna fucking like enjoy yourself it doesn't mean you're not gonna get good food doesn't mean you're not gonna get good results you're still gonna be able to clear assuming you have enough investment right so like w when i say things like yeah Klee's not very good i'm not saying you can't play her i'm just saying like if what you're focused on is min maxing your your dps and your teams Klee's not the right choice for you uh but if you if you do like Klee, then honestly i wouldn't play Klee with c16 so if you have the option to go for one of the other two teams and when it comes to these other two teams you can really go for either uh they're they're good at different things mono pyro is generally better in aoe whereas the double hydro is probably going to be better in single target mm, what team comps beside physical comps are actually getting ruined by c6 bennett does the ko rosario bennett channeling comps still work with c6 bennett yep what about national uh setups become a lot harder in national when you have c6 bennett especially kazuha setups what i've been doing to do my setups recently since i c6 my bennett is i cancel my my channeling n1 with woba uh. Yeah, you have to like cancel your normal attack on Chang Ling so that you don't actually hit them because it's gonna apply Pyro and fuck up your setups. Other than that, I mean, the main thing is it can make it harder to do double scroll setups in general, but it can also make it easier, right? Uh, overall, there's always gonna be some upside and some downside, and because you can't turn back, right? Once you've done it, you can't turn back, and because they might release a unit where the best setup relies on not having c16 too it's always more safe to not c6 your bennett but like realistically it's not gonna ruin your account if you have it's just gonna potentially make you lose out on some options for for setups what do i think about the healers slash healers in the current meta do i think they should be buffed or nerfed or are they fine as is bennett and kokomi are the exceptions but often it feels like running a unit with some defensive utility is enough to the point where using a healer like diona or jane feels bad compared to using their more offensive card of power counterparts like rosario or Kazuma. I think I agree with you that healers generally feel bad to use over non-healers, but I disagree with you with the idea that that's a problem. I think that having the option to not run a healer if you've learned enemy attack patterns well enough that the little bit of defensive utility you get from some damage reduction on Sinkshow or something like that is enough for you. If you've learned those things, then getting rewarded by being able to play more offensive units to deal more damage is good, right? You get rewarded for learning things. It's, it's nice. I think I, I actually I actually like that. I think that's Paul. Ever plan on making a tier list video no matter how short or whatever? No, I do not. I have a, a document that is that, that, that serves as like a tier list in leeway of an actual uh, tier list. If you go to my Twitch channel, it's, uh, which you should, by the way, twitch.tv slash sj77. It's uh, exclamation mark tier list is going to take you to that, right? Where it basically looks at uh, units power. But the thing is, units power is very dependent on a lot of things, right? A big part of it is like, well, Todd's really good if you have a Bennett available, but if you don't, bro, what the fuck? That unit sucks, right? And you take a look at what's good and what's bad about each character, which like a, with a very, very general, like power level rating, either top meta for the best ones, meta for 
good ones, viable for less good ones, and uh, no or shit when it comes to alloy. <laughs> Going into any more like rankings, like tier list format rankings, it's it's too easy to take out of context, and in my opinion, very misleading, very often. So I don't I don't like it. When is a VV debuff more useful than an attack buff like Bennett ult? Um. <sighs> Always-ish. Vivi's broken. The main thing is, you're not just getting Vivi, you're also getting the animal units kit, right? If it's Sucrose, you're getting a fuck ton of EM, you're getting a sock, uh, you're getting a PDDS if you want it. If it's Kazuha, you're getting that fucking damage percent. So you generally get more damage out of the animal units than out of Bennett. What is the easiest way to understand internal cooldown? Um, internal cooldown is like licking things. If you just like lick a wall, right? After your first lick, you're kind, you kind of just don't have saliva on your tongue anymore. And so if you try to lick it again, you're just not gonna apply any saliva on your wall, right? But yeah, uh... <laughs> if you want like an actual under understanding of like how exactly it works, you can check out my, um, the Ayato pre-release video. How do you pick which artifacts to level up to plus 20 and which to scrap? It depends on, on what your, your current account strength is. Realistically, look at what you have right now. Like if I look at my Raiden's flower, which is probably her worst piece, I have uh, two rolls of crit damage, three rolls of crit rate. This is a five roll piece. It's not bad, but it's not amazing. It would be a seven roll flower if it was on Yulan because there's two HP rolls. And it would be a seven roll flower if it was on Changling because there's two EM rolls. On Hu Tao, this would be a nine roll flower and it would basically be perfect. Well, obviously it would be off piece, which isn't what you want, but like you get the idea. I have a five roll. What I'll do is I'll look at what my options are, right? This is starting at two and it will upgrade five times. So the highest this can get is seven. But in order for it to be seven, it has to win a two out of four five times in a row, which is pretty unlikely. So I might as well get it to plus four right now, right? Why not? You get it to plus four, you see if it actually gets better, right? See this, this is a good start. It rolled into crit. So then you can keep going, get it to eight, right? And here it rolls back. So now it has three rolls with three potentials for upgrades. So at best, it will be one roll better than my current flower. But I would have to win all of my flips and well, this is already one low roll, one mid high roll. This is mid low. Overall, it's not an exciting piece. Even if it does become better, it's only gonna be slightly better. Not much of a reason to level it. Now here are the circles I have. I have this one that's uh, pretty fucking good. But even then, right, this is only three rolls. This one is fucking insane, but it's only good on uh, Shangling. So it's not a versatile one. So on this account, I actually am in a situation where Emblem Circlets can be very much worth leveling. So let's take a look at what we have. A crit rate, ER, no other offensive substance, but it has ER, it has HP percent, and now I have Yelan. So technically, this is already a two substat uh, at plus zero, and it start, it's a four liner. So this is definitely something that I could consider leveling. This one only has ER, then flat substats, that's just fucking shit. I'm kind of down to level this one. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> You see that, you just cry. You're gonna be at the mercy of substat RNG at the end of the day, but 